Let's chat for a second as we start this weekly reading vlog. You'll notice that I did not post a reading vlog last week and it's not because I didn't read and it's not because I didn't film, but it just was so chaotic and I didn't finish a single book last week and I just didn't feel like it was good enough to put up. And Kitten, you agree with me, right? Right. So we're starting fresh this week. All of that said, I wanted to start this weekly reading vlog new. I wanna read, I wanna read a lot this week. It's actually my friend Liv's spring readathon over on her Patreon, which I will link down below. You should definitely go join. You may stumble upon some other links in the description that you are interested in as well. It's Tuesday also, it's not Monday, so. Chaotic, chaotic, chaotic. But I'll chat with you about the books I'm reading in just a second. I'm so sorry for the ghastly overhead lighting and for my dishwasher running in the background, but as I always say, small apartment, right? But we need to talk about my books for this week slash for Liv's readathon. So I've only started one of these and I can't even remember the prompts right now. So, oh well. But the first one that I'm reading is The Familiar by Leigh Bardugo. This has been one of my highly anticipated reads and I've actually already started this one. So I'm four chapters in. I don't even know what page that would be. The pages in this book are so white. Is that just because the cover's black? Okay, so I'm like 30 pages in. I thought I was further than that, oops. But I'm really enjoying it so far. This is a very slow, very quiet book so far and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't go into this expecting like big epic fantasy. It is very quiet history with just a little bit of magic sprinkled in, at least so far. Book two, which I'm actually also going to go ahead and start is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I am planning on annotating this book. I don't do that very often with my books, but an Abby book, you just have to. Some of the quotes that I've already heard from this book out of context, like I've already cried just reading the quotes. So I want to remember the places that made me feel seen and the places that made me cry. So this is one that's getting read and I'm gonna start it tonight. And then if I get those two books read, I also want to read Sally Hepworth's Darling Girls, which I think I have the synopsis right, but I'm not gonna read the synopsis. So if I'm wrong, I will clarify later. But I think it's about a group of foster sisters who have grown up and moved on, but it turns out that there was a body found like around their pool or under their house or in the land around their house or something like that. And so um, there's an investigation. So if I get to this one, great. If not, two books is my typical reading rate for a week. So these two. So my best friend is about to get here and bring me some goodies that he made. I need to pick out some tabs and set up an annotating system for this book. I also didn't realize this is my book of the month order from last month, like every book I'm reading in this readathon, which is great because my goal is to like read my book of the month books if I get them. show y'all what Brent brought me. Shortbread and what he's calling Blitz Bars, which were inspired by Ted Lasso's Biscuits with the Boss. And just let me tell you, having a best friend that not only bakes, but like experiments with what they bake, there's nothing in the world like it. There is nothing in the world like it. Apparently the state of my life is my cat has to sleep with her paw in my ear. Like that can't be good for either of us. Sleeping on my collarbone is close enough, girly girl. It's close enough. We're in our Snuggie, about to read this. Do y'all ever have a moment where like, you've got your book ready to go? What, what is it about my ear? You have your book ready to go, but you're like scared to read the first page because it's like a whole new thing to crack open. Not in a bad way. I'm just afraid Abby is gonna crack me open and I'm not ready. Happy Wednesday. The sad thing about this is I looked cute today and I came home and immediately took a shower and got in pajamas because we are at the end of the school year and I'm not the only teacher that's feeling that way currently. 
but I love Wednesdays because Wednesdays are the day that my friend Liv does her sprints over on her Patreon. And so we have sprints tonight. It's also her readathon like I talked about yesterday. So I'm gonna get some of this red. I've only added one tab so far. I've highlighted a couple things, but I've only tabbed one thing. And it was an office reference. <laughs> One of the characters said, I'm a little stitious. I love the office so much. So that made me happy. I've got my Snuggie. We're gonna do sprints at my desk tonight unless I feel like moving. But at this moment, printing at the desk, looking like a little nerd. I just feel like a nerd. The top bun is not top bunning. I wanted it to be more, but instead it's more. But that's neither here nor there. We're here for the books. Let me talk about this so far. I made it to page 40 last night or 36, but essentially page 40. And it's really cute so far. We haven't gotten into anything like really deep yet. It's just like a pretty basic, neat, cute, but online because our characters are both dealing with this situation where everybody that they date breaks up with them and then moves on to find their soulmate. And so the guy, his name is Justin, he posted on Reddit being like one of the like, am I the asshole posts asking if he, anyway, it was a long story. He posted a story on Reddit that led to him basically announcing that he had this issue. And our main girl, her best friend read the thread and showed it to her and she's like oh my gosh somebody else has the same problem as you and so she started dming him on reddit and he would answer and so so far it's just been a really cute back and forth but our characters don't live anywhere close to each other so i don't really know where that's going but their little conversations have been so cute i cannot say that i have like fully perused the online dating pool <laughs> But the fun part of online dating is when you like first make a connection with somebody and you realize you have things in common. And so you're just kind of chatting back and forth and like getting to know people at their like very basic level. And so this conversation between them reminded me of that a lot. So that was super cute. And I know that this book is going to hit home somewhere. There's already talks of a toxic like parent situation which might break me a little bit, we'll see. Um, I am wearing the same shirt as I wore last night because it's comfortable and I definitely have like a rotation of comfortable sleep shirts. Do I need to wear them multiple nights in a row? Yes, because in my brain I'm saving myself laundry and I'm only sleeping in them. So, do y'all have sleep shirts? Let me know. Something I have to say about Funny Story is that we're following our main character who is a travel nurse. Her name is Emma and her best friend is a travel nurse with her named Maddie. And I just have to say, at least this far in the book, like Maddie is an incredible friend. And I might change my mind later, but like the way that Maddie agreed to change plans for Emma because a situation popped up and they're like a package deal. They're like two peas in a pod where one goes, the other goes because of their occupation. Um, they do this together. And so they pick places together, they plan out where they're going to go together and a change in plans for one of them means a change in plans for both of them. And like right now, she is just an example of a beautiful, wonderful, powerful friend. I hope that that does not get compromised in this book because it's really refreshing to see. And I, I hope that that isn't just something that like this book skirts over because it deserves to be applauded that this girl is as wonderful as she is. Abby lets you know up front in this book that there's gonna be talks of toxic parents and um, page 102 to 103. It was like there was no peaceful place to exist, no emotional safe space. I could have chaos or I could have worry. I could be in the tornado or I could be in the eye, but I could never be out of the storm. It was so, so exhausting to live this way. And I had always lived this way because when it came to my mother, I didn't know how to not care. I never felt calm except for the fleeting time her perfume was strong and I knew she was okay, but I am never really okay. I know I'm giving a lot of updates from the same spot, but this is where I'm reading tonight and I have a lot of feelings, okay? Y'all don't like know me, know me. And y'all don't know like what I've been through and what my life is like. But something that I will go ahead and tell you is I do spend a lot of my holidays alone because of my family. And it's really hard being somebody that loves holidays and loves traditions 
knowing that like you're probably going to spend the whole rest of your life wow i'm getting emotional that you're going to spend the whole rest of your life chasing the feelings of what you loved as a child but will probably never get to experience again does that make sense um and so here's another quote i promise i'm not going to read the whole book to you but i knew that feeling the feeling that you're getting back a piece of your childhood, like at Christmas when mom would hand me a tin of cookies and I'd be catapulted back to six-year-olds eating them with dad in front of the fireplace. I deflated again, remembering what this Christmas was going to look like and the Christmas after that and the Christmas after that. Wow. It's actually like a super therapeutic experience reading this book. I know it's a love story, but like I'm getting a lot out of it and I decided to like tab it but I also decided to just kind of annotate and write my feelings down as I'm reading it. And y'all, it's like I'm journaling through the book. I've not had an experience like this before. I'll do just like a quick little flip through. I won't give like spoilers or anything, but like I'm just writing thoughts down as I go and like relating them to my life. And it's very therapeutic. I love books. I'm already crying. I'm already crying. My little payday tradition is that when I get paid, I get Pokestop, and it just makes me so happy. Happy Friday night, guys. I haven't updated at least in one day, maybe two days, I don't remember, but I am making progress in my books, and that's exciting. Hey, kitten, y'all hear her? <laughs> my bed's a mess, but she's here for the head scratches. Anyway. I am, I think, 48% through The Familiar, just kind of bopping along and listening to the audiobook whenever I feel like it. It took a while to grow on me, but I think we're finally at a place where I am, like, genuinely interested. I won't say hooked, not like the way that Ninth House hooked me, but I'm interested. And I did not realize that there was kind of a competition aspect element to this book. It leans into a lot of things. It kind of feels a little gothic. It kind of feels a little bit spooky, but like you can't tell if that's just your brain making it feel spooky or if it's supposed to. Definitely leans into European politics and history, <laughs> and it leans into a lot of discussion on religion. And then when it comes to just for the summer, y'all, <laughs> I did my own sprints last night just because I needed some extra motivation, and I'm now over halfway through that book. I'm actually about to get in bed and see if I can finish it tonight, but the, it's a book about grown adults, and what I'm going to say might not sound like I'm liking it, but just hear me out. For anybody that had like someone that they fell head over heels for, like in high school, when love is young and innocent and fun, and like you get the giggles when you get a text from that person, or that person, you know, gives you a hug for the first time. Our male main character is that. Like he is the embodiment of just like wholesome, pure like first love and it is so sweet. It is making me just like kick my feet and giggle. I think I've written like cinnamon roll beside his name 50,000 times. And then our girl is much more reserved. She's basically lived her whole life out of suitcases because of her family situation. And then when she grew up, she never stopped that. And so she is used to leaving and running and not getting attached and seeing these two dynamics in a relationship that's more or less a fake relationship, but you can tell that neither of them wants it to be fake, but they're reacting to that in very different ways. Like he can't bear to see the end. And then she is blinding herself to the fact that this has to end, even though it is probably the most perfect romantic situation she could imagine herself in. And I don't know where it's gonna go. It's just, it's really sweet and really fun. It has a lot of humor in it so far. Abby just does it. She just does it. So I'm gonna read a little bit more and then y'all tomorrow, I think we're going book shopping because I do need to get a couple of books. I said I was gonna try and slow down on the book buying <laughs> and I am, but I do have like book clubs and stuff. One of my in-person book clubs picked the book, The Husbands for this next month. And then in one of my discord groups, we are going to start doing like a sisterhood of the traveling book thing where we each annotate a book that got voted on and then the next month we mail it to the next person and they add their annotations. So at the end of it, the book that like you started with, you get back with everybody's notes in it. And I just think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And that's the book that got chosen from my poll. So I need to pick that book up and then um, Emily Henry's book. I did not go get it on release day because this week has been insane. <laughs>
guys, 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 guys. I finished this this morning. It's Saturday morning. Tried to finish it last night. <laughs> Fell asleep because teacher tired. The thing that you always hear me say, but I finished this and I spent the morning sobbing, <laughs> sobbing. I know I was talking a lot about how like their romance was just so cute and wholesome and felt like high school. And while that is true, the deeper we got into the book, the more my tab switched from pink, which was like, oh, I love this, to blue, which was, oh, this made me sob. I've said before that Abby Jimenez gives like the initial warning that this book deals with a lot of childhood trauma and toxic parenthood. And the further we got into the book and the more that we like explored it, oh my gosh, like y'all, it was heart wrenching. I'm not gonna give details, but if you've read this book, my favorite part slash the part that got me the most, page 336, present. Literally lost it. I was sitting in bed, like guttural sob. I was crying so hard. And something I posted to Instagram this morning was, I, I have a lot of trouble uh, talking and articulating what my childhood was like. Like I look back on it and I have really, really, really good childhood memories. But also I have let a lot of my fondness for the positive cloud, my ability to look back and see what what was really going on and the way that that has affected me into adulthood and my ability to cope with hard things stems from a lot of what I dealt with in my childhood. And there's a lot of talk in this book. This isn't a spoiler. This is just like a character trait of our main character, Emma. She talks a lot about how when she is dealing with hard things, she gets small and the edges start to curl in inside of her. And that can be something that seems like Abby Jimenez just like made up to try and articulate what Emma is going through. But that is a real legitimate thing and a way to phrase what is happening when you are somebody that was not raised to deal with conflict. Ooh, it just, it gets really really deep. <laughs> I won't dwell too much on it, but I have to say like y'all, I've never given a book six stars and I know you can't do that on your apps, but this book was a six star book for me. It beat out yours truly for me. I dream of a day where I can meet Abby Jimenez and just like thank her for yours truly and for this book and like get her to sign my copy that's got all of my journaled notes through it and that would like mean the world to me. because I only got the two books I needed in there. So first of all, I got my in-person book club pick, which is The Husbands by Holly Gramazio. I believe is how you pronounce her name. So this will be a fun read. And then I could not walk out of the store without a funny story. Okay, I'm home. It's like two o'clock and I haven't eaten yet. So I'm gonna have my lunch. I got a Chick-fil-A salad today and their new like berry lemonade. We'll see if I like it. And then I'll either sit down to work on a crochet project. I don't take many of those right now, but it's for a friend and listen to the familiar, or I might start reading Darling Girls. I'm not sure yet, but it's been a good day so far. Um, there is like a festival going on in my town, but I just am really not feeling people at the moment. Um, I don't know if it's just because that book that I finished this morning was so like emotionally overwhelming that I just kind of need to sit and be a man. I still can't get over it. <laughs> I decided to host some sprints tonight. So that's gonna happen in about 20 minutes. I also just made dinner. Y'all probably just saw that, but it's manicotti, which is one of my favorite ways to eat pasta. Manicotti is like a stuffed ricotta cheese pasta, if you didn't know. And I'm happy to say that I have been listening to Darling Girls on Everand, and I'm having a really good time, and it is flying by. I think I'm on like chapter 14, and I feel like I haven't even been listening for an hour, and like I'm almost on page 100. Flying by, like I said. Hopefully on sprints, nobody sees the giant pile of laundry that I need to fold, so maybe that'll happen while I'm listening, but also um, I need to work on that crochet cow. So. I'm gonna eat really quick and then hop on with some friends and read because that's what I want to be doing this weekend. And if you ever wanna know what my sprint setup is, it's usually this. I do have like a little platform for my laptop, but it's at work. Um, so it's on a candle. 
book, dinner, caffeine. It's a good night. Bullet journal supplies. Crooked painting that I'm gonna hang elsewhere soon. <laughs> anyway, let's sprint. Howdy friends, happy Sunday morning. I'm here to wrap up the vlog because I finished Darling Girls last night. Got on sprints, a few friends there read with me for close to five hours. Some people stuck in the entire time, some people popped in and out. But if you were there for all five hours with me, you were the realist. I will show you the crochet project I was working on while I listened to this, but he's not quite done yet, so I don't wanna show him off yet. But yeah, one sitting for this book. Listen to it in like under five hours. I was talking on there a lot about how it takes a lot for a thriller to be like a four or five star for me because I've read so many of them and you just start to recognize the commonly used tropes and thrillers and you're just able to predict things. But this wasn't even a thriller that like you were out to predict things in. It was a thriller that you let happen to you. We're following foster sisters who grew up at this house with a lot of a foster mother. She was she was a lot and it's really interesting when you think about it that both books I read this week dealt with the foster system and both books I read this week dealt with toxic parent parental figures toxic guardians what a week what a heavy heavy week but this one we're following the sisters both in adulthood as they have grown up and made something with their lives some for the better some for the worse but we're also getting a look back into what it was like to grow up at this foster home and a body is found in their adult lives on the property where they grew up. And of course they're called into question along with a lot of other people who were adjacent to the property. And it's a character study. It is a look at a lot of like mental things. And I just had a really good time with it. Nothing in the book really happened the way that I expected it to, but I had a great time. So I ended up giving this one four stars just because there weren't any like boom, twist. You just kind of let it unfold and happen to you. This was my first Sally Hepworth book and it won't be my last. I will be checking out some more, but that is the end of this week's vlog. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you watch the whole vlog this week, I know I was like looking chaotic and tired all week and I filmed a lot in the same spot, which is something I try not to do. Um, but if you stuck with me the whole time, Thank you. I promise it's not this chaotic over here all the time. We're just at the end of the school year and it is like walking up a mountain some days to get everything I want to done. So thank you so much for supporting me. And like, this is definitely like my outlet. And if I don't show up looking a hundred percent or articulating my thoughts a hundred percent on here, it's not because I don't care about y'all. It's because I want to be here even when I'm having those really, really hard days. But like I said, if you watched all the way to the end of this video, there's two different emojis that you can leave me. You could leave me a sun for just for the summer, or you could leave me anything that has to do with like a swimming pool or swimming because of the cover of this book, Darling Girls. I love you so much. Thank you guys for hanging in there with me. We are almost at the summer. As always, my social media is linked down below. I will see you in another video very soon. Bye guys.